our house for sale and has a contract. Favaro has his house for sale. And Mrs. Carson, since her husband died, he has her house up for sale. What other Democrats are leaving town now? Are you, who else is planning? 800 Sylvan had a plan to do housing on this side from the beginning. And that was why they wanted the subdivision. And they even alluded to the fact of more than one subdivision, which we heard tonight at the pre-meeting of the planning board. Okay, this property is 28 acres, and it's not 20 acres that they keep talking about. Okay, it is in the form of a condo association, and it could remain as a condo association with commercial development. The application was a false prospect in order to get the subdivision and to get the deed restriction removed. Their attorney, John Shapisi, had researched Engel and Cliff's COA compliance prior to Normandy ever filing an application with the planning board. If we had given them what they wanted, they would have come back with the 20 acres that they're talking about now, and we would be right where we are. But they would have already had the subdivision and the deed restriction removed, which allows them to put the buildings close to 9W. Okay? The, the planning board chair, Russell Polino, had worked for Okay? You gotta shut up. Okay. You got your three minutes are up. Planning board chair Russell Perino and work with council president Carol McMurray your question, please. for over a year with Serenian and Ms. Reddy. But since January, they have been cut out of the process and all the information that they had worked on and accumulated over that time was lost. The majority did not know, want to know anything with them. This was politics at the expense of the Excuse me. Oh, uh, Of settling. Okay. That's the reality. I, I, I took some money together. 
Good summer of the year. The faces that I look are many residents in each one of the towns. Okay? Uh, Anglewood Cliffs has uh, 5,369. Yes. Okay? With an income average 140,000. Crestview has 8,729 residents and has a 75 year with an income of 110,000. Demarest, zero low income housing. With 5,004 residents. Can I fly 14,500 resident as 35 in low income houses? <laughs> and in order for me to be able to determine whether they're right or wrong, I have to look it up. I took from the computer available data cluster that has the, one of the highest one, as a 14 unit. Yes! Yeah! We yeah. 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 There is something wrong in all this things. Yeah. Thank you for your research. Where did you find these numbers? Because they don't have vacant land, and they don't have houses to last their support. Their unmet need is still there. They just have, they don't have an RDP that we have. The only reason our RDP is not 22, but somewhere in the, the hundreds, is because we have Normandy filing suit against us. This is why we're here. Eight six three. Thank you for your service and uh, your profession. But I'm going to point out our real case about the actual case about the uh, enrollment of students. They put on the uh, new apartment, Avalon apartment, 408 unit. First year only, new student was uh, 223 student enrolled. That is, uh, he mentioned 127, right? That is uh, 223. Only 100 students. <laughs> Litigation. I know uh, last year and uh, the before we spent about $800,000 litigation cost, right? I, I'm not sure about it. But uh, why don't you keep fighting with them? Time is our side, such as uh, normally we spend uh, five or six years, they have a lot of financial burden. Then they will go back to the court yeah. of the commercial right. unit. Yeah. So time is our side. Keep continuing fight with them. We gonna pay the we gonna pay the legal fee, right? Don't save a legal fee. We have to spend the legal fee more, and we hire more strong law firm and keep fighting with them. That time is our time.
Jeff, this is not easy for me because I respect you. Mike, I respect you too. But not anymore. Thank you. I worked with you for one year. I selected you to fight for the residents of this town that put the faith in the council to do the right thing. And you told me you could get the job done. You owe me a lot of explanations well, along with this town as to why you did an about face after I left that council. Because I left this board with everything they needed to do to win. And I don't know what happened after October 1st, 2018, but something drastic happened, okay? Because let me tell you something right now. And Mr. Powell, I'm a little disappointed with you too. Let me tell you something. Because I have a chart that you gave me that doesn't match the one you put up on the board. <laughs>
Did they violate the Open Public Meetings Act? Were they meeting in secret? Okay? They owe us all explanations. Get up out of your chair one more time and you're getting thrown out, sir. Excuse me? Go ahead, sir. Yes. 
Uh, what's to prevent us from rezoning it so we can allow more units on 77 so we wouldn't have to uh, build on Normandy? Yes. Well, that's, I mean, that's just a question. So basically, you're saying you can, can we rezone? Can we rezone Hudson Terrace to allow more denser units on there and fulfill the obligation that way? There, there, there are restrictions. It might be possible, but again, I, again, I relied on these professionals, and they've been told not to cooperate with me and with the public. So they're just they're just hell bent on building four hundred units. I will look into that. And some. Go ahead, Mr. Serenia. There's, there's things I can respond to, and there's things I can't. Uh, but as to that, it's very clear that the more density that you permit on the municipal side, the more they can argue there should be higher density on the other sites, so your obligation goes up. So it was a balancing act between you know, what's a density that we can defend on our property versus theirs. And the other thing that bears emphasis is we didn't get their expert reports until January 7th, and we didn't uh, have an opportunity to assess where we are in litigation and where this was going. So uh, things evolve over the course of, of litigation, and you need to, to deal with what's in front of you. Um, I will look into that yeah. separately. And uh, in regards to the school budget, it was 800000 and the projected total revenue was two, no, $3 million, right? I just wanted to know what the total cost to the town would be for these 600 units uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, expenses. No one's answered that. So I, I believe they've only the answered that they're going to raise the budget 800,000. But from what it sounds like, it doesn't sound like that's enough to take care of the additional students. Well, um, look, um, yes, three million. But then how much more is going to come out of our pocket? No, it's not. Our total budget. Well, we, obviously, so our expenses are going to go up. Aren't Sir, I, I thank you for that question. There, there's been an issue tonight, as I think you heard as you were sitting there, that um, the numbers seem half-baked or wholly baked, so we're trying to figure that out ourselves as well. Well, I mean, Mrs. McMorrow had a completely contrary worksheet from a year ago, so I, I've lost faith and confidence. Yeah, we don't know that. We never saw that sheet. Oh, you did, too. You all got it. You all got that sheet last year. Uh, but you're, asking, you're raising very good questions. Um, we're taking note. Uh, you know, if Mr. Powell wants to answer, he can answer. Because, um, what I showed was that the... Is this live? Yeah. Of the, two, of the $3 million in new tax revenue, approximately 840000 of that would be allocated to the municipal budget, not the school. Okay. And... Uh, what was the, on the sheet that you gave to Ms. McMorrow last year? Then? I have no idea what the sheet is. She's waving it in the air. So I would, have to, I would have to request the information from the town officially in order to see that, right? That would be available to me? I'm happy to look at whatever she's got. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who should speak? Yes. Hi, it's Roberta Booth. Okay, let, let the residents speak, everybody. From six dollars court. I have some questions about the 77 unit plan. Uh, one question is, I'm puzzled as to who would finance it and who would build it. My understanding of affordable housing has always been that you need market right housing in order to subsidize the affordable housing, so that the 77 units would probably have to correspond to another three or four hundred units of market housing in order for it to be built. That's it's, not not the way, it's not the way it works. Well, not did, I'm not talking about, no, 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 I'm not, excuse me, let me just finish going ahead. I'm not talking about the law, I'm talking about economically. Because, okay. there, there's, there's multiple ways to go about creating affordable housing. One is to have a project where 20% of the units are affordable. Sure. And another is to have a, a project where 100% of the units are affordable. If you're going to comply with a project where 100% of the units are affordable, you're responsible for covering any gap in the finance. Right. So if you have a 77 unit obligation, you know, that plan 
from January showed a $12.8 million gap in financing if funds could have been What would be the total cost of 77 units? What would be the total cost, not the gap, but the total cost for 77 units? I don't, More than total? I don't, it's, it's the gap. I don't know the, I don't know the cost. My recollection is the gap because we had to adopt the resolution. Right, but somebody's got to put up. Somebody's got to put up the equity. Somebody's got. Somebody's got to put up the money. Is it the town that's going to put up the money? Who's going to? Who's going right. to put them? It, well, it would be an exposure. What developer? There is no developer available Where's to do that. We don't have any. So that's that's my first question, and I still don't understand how it gets financed. Okay, if it's a hundred percent affordable project, okay. the developer needs to. In order to be able to to pay for it, has to compete with nine percent tax credits. Extremely competitive. I want to be surprised if there's more than ten applications for every tax credit. So there's a giant fiscal exposure to complying with a hundred percent project. So what you have to do if you're complying with a hundred percent affordable project is you have to commit to cover the gap in financing. Yeah. So the town would have to put up thirteen million dollars. So to produce fifty-seven units, it was a twelve point eight million dollar, twelve point seven million dollar gap that we had to adopt a resolution that would, that said if the developer can't secure financing, we'll cover that gap in financing. That assumes that the obligation is seventy-seven. Right. No, or the, the developers are saying. The so what, what, you're, what, you're, what you're basically saying, to you know, I'm a real estate professional by trades, and, right. I, and this is a little bit gobbledygook to me. What you're saying is that the 77 units are economic in and of themselves because of the tax credit, if they're all affordable. Is no, that what, you're saying? what I'm saying no, is no. that the only no, way to pay here. for a 77, or in our case, a 57 unit affordable project right is there's a gap in financing. And if you can't make up that gap through other ways, then you're the backstop. So the if town, you're gonna write the check. And what are the other ways? What are the other ways? What are the other, the other ways, ways is not, there's competition for tax credits. The ta what are the tax credits worth? Well, I don't, I don't know the details of how much you get for tax credits. Well, but it's important. But if, I mean, if we're talking about the, the town. No, 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 I can give you the bottom line. We did an analysis of the costs and revenues for a 100% affordable housing project. Right. Uh, the rents that come out of the projects don't come close to generating enough income right. to raise debt and equity for the project. Right. That's the nature. You probably get 4% tax credits to fund a 100% affordable housing project. That's what we analyzed, the 57 unit. With only 4% low income housing tax credits, the funding gap is still $120,000 a year. And that is the gap that a developer is not going to provide because it's lost money. The town would have to issue a bond issue for $120,000. Whether it's bonds or, or cash out of the till, right? It's, it's, cash out of the till. it's $13 million that the town has to put up. Right. That's right. So that's the reason that those projects aren't <laughs> done by private developers, right. they're done under tax credit rules. And so we looked at that and it was considered. Um, and it's, it, it is an option for satisfying your obligation. But it'll cost the town $13 million. Yes. Right. By the way, each of those units pays about $500 a year in property taxes. Right. Because uh, they're under a pilot agreement, you're not allowed to assess them full taxes. So. So you would have an underwater situation ongoing with respect to municipal services? Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. With respect to the 77 units. So, second question is, my understanding of what, at least what I heard today, is that you'd be cannibalizing the police station to do that? Is that right? It was a concept plan. It was, it was a concept, but the intention was to try to stop But somebody said, let's just do that. Let's do it now. And the fact is... That would cost more than the thirteen million dollars right. because you'd have to right. replace. That, that's right. Thirty million dollars on their replacement. 
Yeah. What we were trying to do is, we were actually trying to do it so you didn't have to do anything at the police station. So I have a second question. That's, that's one. So the, the 77 unit plan is expensive for the town. 